There's more to galaxies than meets the eye. If you add up all the matter we can see in them, in the form of stars, gas and dust, there isn't enough of it to explain how galaxies form, the way they rotate, the way they move through clusters of galaxies and why they don't fly apart. Take our own galaxy, the Milky Way for example. It contains several hundred billion stars, all of which are revolving around the galactic center, just like planets revolve around the Sun, except that in the case of the planets, they move more slowly in their orbits the further away from the Sun they are. Mercury, the nearest planet, travels around its orbit at about 47 kilometers per second, whereas Neptune, much further out, moves at only five and a half kilometers a second. The same should be true of stars in the Milky Way if our galaxy were composed just of ordinary matter. The further out that a star orbits the center of the galaxy, the more slowly it should move. But that's not what astronomers have found. It turns out that there's no drop-off in the orbital speed of stars towards the galaxy's visible edge. So what's going on? The most obvious explanation is that there's a large amount of matter in the Milky Way that's gone unnoticed. And what's more, this undetected matter occupies a vast spherical halo in which the visible part of the Milky Way is embedded. Evidence for the existence of this missing matter, or dark matter as it's come to be known, goes back to the 1930s. The Dutch astronomer Jan Oort was the first to observe that stars in the outer parts of the Milky Way and in other galaxies were moving much too fast to be accounted for by the combined gravitational pull of all the visible matter we can see in them. Shortly after, the Swiss astronomer Fritz Wicki published the results of his study of how galaxies move within the Coma Cluster, a large cluster of more than a thousand galaxies that lies about 320 million light years away. From measurements of how galaxies were moving near the edge of the Coma Cluster, he came up with an estimate for the cluster's total mass that was 400 times greater than that expected based on the number of galaxies and the total brightness of the cluster. The gravitational tug of the visible matter in the cluster was nowhere near strong enough to explain the high speed of galaxies at the periphery. We arrive, he said, at the astonishing conclusion that dark matter is present with a much greater density than luminous matter. Since that time, the evidence has grown that dark matter accounts for roughly 85% of all the matter in the universe, and that in most galaxies, there's about six times more dark matter than visible. Is it possible that dark matter consists simply of ordinary matter that we can't easily see because it gives off very little radiation? Could the giant halo of dark matter that surrounds the Milky Way be made of large numbers of dark objects that are hard to detect, such as black holes, other dead or dim stars, brown dwarfs, planets, dark clouds of gas and dust, and so on. Searches have been carried out for such objects, known collectively as massive compact halo objects, or machos. But it's become clear that at best, they could account for only a very small fraction of the total amount of dark matter in galaxies and in the universe at large. Much more likely, astronomers now believe most dark matter takes the form of WIMPs, which stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particles. These are particles different from any of the known subatomic particles that make up ordinary matter, and they hardly interact at all with matter as we know it, except through gravity and the weak nuclear force. Most current attempts to detect and identify dark matter then are focused on finding WIMPs. And of course, that's not an easy task, given that WIMPs could come in various forms with different masses and other properties, and none of them interact with ordinary matter via the two strongest forces in nature, electromagnetism or the strong nuclear force. Some of the candidates for WIMPs, which theoreticians have suggested, 
have been ruled out. Others are still in the running and a number of major experiments around the world are being carried out or being constructed to continue the search for these elusive particles. If in time physicists continue to come up empty-handed, they may have to look more closely at other explanations for why galaxies move and have evolved in ways that can't be explained by their visible contents. Perhaps, as has been suggested, vast numbers of microscopic black holes were formed during the Big Bang, and these account for the bulk of the missing matter. Or, perhaps there's something wrong with our current understanding of gravity, although that seems unlikely given the multiple lines of evidence that there really is matter out there that we can't see. Whatever the final solution to the mystery of dark matter proves to be, it will involve a major advance in our understanding of the universe at a fundamental level.